Ladies and gentlemen, your next contest is scheduled to take place at 145 pounds. Please welcome your next fighter, making the walk to the cage in the blue corner, Jimmy Fell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent, making the walk to the red corner, introducing Sullivan Kerner! Well, we're about to get underway with more action here at the Cage Warriors Academy Southeast number 23. Jimmy Fell in the black with the white pattern shorts taking on Sullivan Kerner in the black with gray trim. 145 pound action, referee Harry Selby about to get this one underway. No touch of gloves and it's Fell taking the center of the cage early, pumping that jab. Oh, oh big oh. shots. Kerner drops his man <laughs> and lands in half guard. I, he clipped him with that short, quick hook as he was coming in. And when your body's coming in like that and a fist is coming at you. Looking to put the pressure on from top position is Sullivan Kerner. He's going to be wearing the straight ankle lock here. I, I'm not sure because he just lifted him with his leg. Looking for that Achilles tendon pull is Jimmy Fell. He can't use a twisting ankle lock under the amateur rules. The straight ankle lock is okay, but it's Sullivan Kerner bullying his man back to the mat here. I mean, the, the strength difference between these two is on show. As soon as he grabbed that leg for the leg lock, he lifted him with his leg, didn't even use his arms, just lifted his leg up and moved him to the other side of the cage. That's so, scary. That's a <laughs> terrifying prospect. Going strength for strength with Sullivan Kerner. Kerner now content to punch away from the open guard of Jimmy Fell. Steps out and he's going to put those big punches back to work. Now his corner was screaming at him to let him up. So obviously they're very happy with him standing and trading. If I'm in Fell's corner, I'm telling him, okay, let's close the distance. Like, let's not play this game. He's got an over under there and he's bullying his man against the cage. No knees to the head under this amateur rule set, but he can put the knees into the body and use those short, irritating punches to keep his man guessing. Nice, straight knee to the body there from Kerner. And if you look what Kerner's doing is he's blocking the takedown using his head. This one's me, He's actually. forcing it away to where you wouldn't be able to lock this his hands me. because his head was buried deep inside. Good head position from Jimmy Fell now. Getting a little bit of... Offensive timing against the cage of his own, but he's not really been able to move Sullivan Kerner around the cage much thus far. There's the big pickup, but great work from Kerner to defend the one leg. And that's a ton of energy being used to get him off the ground, and a failure like that can be depleting morally. So it'll be interesting to see, okay, how does Fell switch it up? Does he just try a quick little drop, or what does he do? Because he's in there. Got the single leg here, trying to debase his man, but Again, fantastic balance from Sullivan Kerner. He used one foot on the cage there to briefly keep himself off the mat. He's, he's going to go down this time, but he's in a good position. He's got his back on the cage. Let's see if he can tuck those legs up underneath him and get back. And he's already halfway there. Yeah, he's already starting to work his way back up. And now Fell needs to go, okay, how do I get him down and keep him down? Kerner got a good grip on the neck there. He's going to give up. Another takedown, but the cane lands successfully on all fours, pops straight back up. Nick, this is going to be a really interesting round for the judges to score. Because, I mean, if you look at it, the very first 10 seconds, he got dropped. So if I'm a judge, I'm going, okay, he got dropped. But he did come back, he fought out of it, he worked his way back up, and then he was able to show aggression coming in. Now, do you forget about the drop? Probably not, because that is that highlight of the round. But you look at it as well and you go, well, you know what? Look what he did there. You know, he got in on the takedown. He quote unquote shot three takedowns. I, I would say that, yeah, maybe he actually completed them, except for 
the minute Kerner hit the mat, his ass was right back up. And the balance that he showed, not only against the cage, but when he was going one hand down. Very much still everything to play for in this contest. As we look at the replay there, beautiful takedown, but the hand was down on the mat, the balance was there, and able to pop straight back up with Sullivan Kerner. Very, very interested and excited to see this second round. Okay, now did they soak him down to get more time? Is this Ice Skate 2019? I don't see George St. Pierre in there, but you know. George St. Pierre Oops. never. I fucking broke you on that one. Hey, accidents happen. No, they poured water on him. It's not accidents happen. Okay, George. Come on now, Fra. Second round about to begin. No touch of gloves. Oh, same as the first round, Steve. Beautiful work stuff in that takedown from Kerner there. And immediately trying to throw those heavy shots over the top. Nice scramble here from Jimmy Fell from underneath, but Kerner staying very strong here. He's got that arm over the face, creating a little bit of space if he can. Yeah, pushing off the face there, palming off, using it to stand out. Throwing those big punches through the guard is Kerner here. Now, Kerner's big thing is he was trying to escape to get back to standing because he wanted it to be a striking battle. But it, it's obvious that Fell, when he grabbed a hold of that ankle, was like, no, I want to get him closer. Let, let, let's do a little bit of jiu-jitsu. Keeps trying to use that guard, but Fell wise to it and backed up quick. Nice body shot from Fell, and Kerner comes straight back with those big hooks. Oh, it's a shootout now in the center of the cage. Good head movement from Jimmy Fell. And it's kind of a transition, because in the first round, Fell got lit by those, but he had no head movement. He learned a lesson, because here he is now, he's slipping those punches. If you watch it, he's rolling his shoulders as well. Kerner throwing everything with everything heavy. Jab to the body there for Fell. Mixing up the target area as well. Oh. Big shots landed from both guys, center of the cage. The difference behind it though is if you look, when Kerner's throwing inside, he's dropping down and he's putting his ass into it. It's one Quentin Jackson said all the time. The reason why I knock people out is I put my ass into it. He's also making Fell throw his shots off the back foot, which is gonna take some of that power off. And you know, I gotta say in a slugfest, right now you only fancy one of them. Yeah. But Fell's smart. He knew he was getting the short end of the stick when it came to the striking, so he closed that distance and shot in on a single. Good fight, IQ. Nice At a nice wide base. Now having to work really hard to try and make it block Turner just not allowing it. And it could be time. This is biggest enemy here, guys. Can't be too much long left on the clock. He gets the takedown, but what can he do with it from here? He's got 20 seconds to do a bit of damage. And perhaps not end the fight, but he needs to send the message to Kerner here. And this is it. He's ending this round on top in a dominant position, so it's not a bad thing. Not enough to have taken the round you'd have thought, though. I, it's it's weird because the tail of the tape will be this one. It's Kerner Gast. He could he could well be. You know he, he's a strong, muscular guy. He's he's the shorter guy. He's he's carrying the more muscle around his chest and shoulders. Maybe he is Gast. And this is a guy who's throwing every punch as we see in the replays. He's throwing every punch from his hips. And this might be another one of the rope a dope. Okay, let's have him gas out. We'll finish him in the third. Now, with only three-minute rounds, that's not a wise strategy, though. And Kerner's still, still dangerous on his feet. I mean, got to say, Fell, Fell's beard is holding up. But Fell is taking the shots a lot more cleanly in the second round than he did in the first. That first shot dropped him with one. Second round, he's taking two, three, and four. What can he do in the third round? 
Exactly, and if you notice in that second round, he was slipping more punches. He actually had head movement in. And it might have been one of those things where his, his corner didn't even tell him. He just went, I don't want to get hit by this kid anymore. I felt like it. I said, I don't want to get hit by him, and I'm not even in the cage. Third and final round here. Corner, Sullivan Turner in the red. And we finally see a little touch of gloves. It wasn't the uh, most conclusive, but there was a tap of gloves there. Going into this third round, Fell immediately changes levels, tries to get in on that double leg. All turned well by Kerner, but still on that single leg, driving hard. It's going to be very difficult to complete from here while Kerner's got that nice wide base. Fell's going to have to try and rip him off the cage now. Gonna find it very hard to join the hands behind the hips of Fell with that nice wide base. He's trying to yank him upwards instead. Yeah, and then it looked like he was guys trying to reach down, pick the ankle perhaps. But again, Kerner staying very, very heavy with a nice wide base. Oh, and there it is. And in the first, we saw this happen, but whenever we saw it happen, Kerner was right back up. Now, a little bit slower to get up. Still getting up. But, uh, uh -oh. oh, a mistake from Fell, and Kerner's taking his back here. This could be the decisive moment of this contest. And with uh, over a minute and a half left, that's a lot of time to be on top, on someone's back, to be able to rain down punches. Sullivan Kerner looking like he's still got a fair bit of pop in those punches. Again, going to watch the straight ankle lock. He steps out from inside that leg and tandem, but looking for a wheelbarrow sweep there was Fell. Turner now, just happy to work inside the open guard. I, those were hard shots to the body. I mean, thudding shots. When oh. I can hear a thud, I know it hurts. Rushing in this Seconds, I mean. Referee wants to see a little bit, a little bit more action. No, no, we've we got, got 55 seconds left in this round, so there's still a bit of time for one of these guys to do something spectacular. Bell's still looking light on his toes, but Sullivan Kerner straight in to crush him up against the cage. Which is, seems to me doesn't seem like I'd want to be doing if I was Kerner. The only reason I would do that is if I was tired, because when I'm standing at range, I hit at will. Bell relentless in, in chasing the takedowns and, and working the clinch. Absolutely relentless. Perfect work here from Kerner though, just pushing that head straight down. He's got his base still nice and wide. And he's stopping Fell from getting in on that. Again, he's going to extend the base, make it as wide as possible to stop Fell, linking those hands together. But here's the thing, Fell's taking time off of the clock in a dominant position. Absolutely, and, he's and secures end the, the fight in a very dominant position. Man, this is going to be an interesting one for the judges to pick apart because, as you said, Nick, as the fight wore on, it was Fell really being the aggressor. Exactly. So every time he could put Kerner on his back foot, even if he was just coming in for the shots, he was constantly driving back in the cage. He was active enough to where they weren't separating him. So he was making that concerted effort to have cage control. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we won't have to wait too long for the judges to tabulate their scorecards. That's uh, a good fight here. I mean, it was it was great because it showed that Fell had a really nice chin because he took some pretty damn hard shots in the first, learned from his mistakes in the first, and came back shooting a very wrestling heavy second and third round. While we're waiting for the decision, we give a quick shout out to this fire group, long-term sponsor here at PCMMA. Our boys over at Whip Street Motors. Riva Pizza, wood-fired pizza for any occasion. And don't forget, reach your peak at R-Y-D, no, R-Y-P-O, R, what is that? R-Y-P-O, well, it's R-I-P official. I can't, com. I, sorry guys, I, I was, Line, I think. So you get but older. In this way. I, 
I went to school in America. What can I tell you? <laughs> we learned to read at a second grade level by the time we're in college. Fighters to the center. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to your judges' scorecards to declare your winner by way of split decision. In the blue corner, Jimmy!